Good morning. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you this morning. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. It's good to see you. I'm so grateful that you've come to worship and start the new year off in worship and to worship with us. If you're a guest visiting, my name's Jay Smith. I'm pleased to welcome you to this church. We're glad that you've come to worship with us this morning. Uh, please be aware of all those good things that are happening in the life of the church. The insert lets you know our Wednesday night will be kicking back up in full swing this coming Wednesday. Be aware of all those options. Uh, a couple of other things for guests. Uh, there are Get Connected cards on the pews all around you. If you just fill one of those out, drop it in the offering plate, that helps us reconnect with you. If you have questions about any of the ministries of our church, we'd love to share with you about that. Also, after the service to my left, your right, the double doors here, a member of our church family would love to greet you after the service and give you a gift that has information as well related to the ministries of our church. So keep that in mind if you're a guest with us today. The only other thing I would lift up to you next Sunday after worship, we're going to have a feedback session related to our Vision 2020, our strategic ministry plan that we're putting together this year. And so if you can remain after next Sunday's worship service, we would love to get feedback from you. Copies of that are in the office. I've sent that out by email. If you haven't seen a copy and want a copy, you see me. I'll be sure that you get a copy of the 2020 vision statements and the goals that we're looking at. And we're going to share in that next Sunday. Today is Epiphany, and actually not today's Epiphany, it's the closest Sunday to Epiphany, which is January 6th. I got that correct on the Staff Laity Church Wednesday night quiz. I did get that question right. Uh, we're in the 12 days of Christmas, actually, and this is the Sunday we remember the journey of the wise man to honor and to worship Christ. That's why we've all come to worship him. I'm glad you're here. Let us worship the Lord. O oh God, you made of one blood all nations, and by a star in the east revealed to all peoples him whose name is Emmanuel. Enable us who know your presence with us so to proclaim his unsearchable riches that all may come to his light and bow before the brightness of his rising, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. And on this day, this Sunday that we celebrate Epiphany, I invite you to stand and join in singing our opening hymn, found in your red hymnal number 245, The First Noel. Remain standing, let us affirm our faith together with the historic affirmation, the Apostles' Creed, printed in your bulletin. Would you join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, we have come asking for the child, wondering where that love might be born, seeking that joy that might satisfy our thirst, wandering through the darkness of so many mistakes. We have come to this place where wise men and shepherds and young women met. We have come to this place called Bethlehem, to this place where our hearts rise like yeast, to this place where we meet our newborn hope, to this place where we taste our deepest joy in Bethlehem, where we are soon the worst, imagining that no good can come we somehow missed its name. And now as you're seated and in reverent prayer, let us confess our sins in the sanctuary of our own hearts. And now as a community of faith, let us confess our sins together, the prayer that's printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious and steadfast God, you come to us with news of hope, freedom, and restoration. We confess that we have not believed your word or trusted your promise. We have been silent when we could have spoken your mercy, selfish when we could have shared our time and gifts and timid when we could have shined your light into the world. God of compassion, hold us gently. Forgive what we have done or failed to do. Free us from the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace through Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, the Lord speaks tenderly to us. For Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for our sins the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are blessed as God's people to be able to be a blessing to others through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. I want to remind you that this is Communion Sunday, and so we do have another special opportunity for you to give. As you come to the altar rail today, any gifts you leave on the altar rail will be given to Hotel Inc. And we depend very heavily on Hotel Inc. There are numerous times every week we refer people to them and the services that they provide to help the homeless and precariously housed in our community. They offer a tremendous service to this community and to this church as we do rely on them very heavily. So as you are led, if you feel led to give your gifts on the altar rail today, we'll go to Hotel Inc. Will our ushers please come forward to receive our tithes and our offerings. Silent. 
I had it in my notes, uh, but failed to mention. I appreciate so much Kevin preaching last Sunday. Kevin is to my left, your right. Kevin, raise your hand. Kevin doesn't look for recognition, but I know he and Cindy, they usually fill in for me when I'm not here, and they do such a wonderful job all the time, and I just wanted to thank him. I know you're grateful for his ministry and Cindy's ministry among us, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin, uh, for preaching last Sunday. 471 in your hymnal, 471. We're going to be using this at the end of the service, but... I'd like to use it as the theme song for this particular message. I think of this chorus in relation to the wise men in this text that's before us today. I came across this chorus several years ago now. I just fell in love with it. It's, it just simply moved me, moved me. It's a great chorus, if you will, for the beginning of a new year, a fresh start. And Julie's going to help me get off on the right note here. And this is going to be a song that we will sing at the end of the sermon, transitioning to communion, and then again at the end of the service. I hope it is a blessing to you. Thank you. The traditional text for Epiphany Sunday is the wise men's journey to Bethlehem. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 to 12. For those of you who are able, would you please stand and honor the reading of the gospel. And listen now for the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet has written, but to you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. You can be seated.
I don't know how many years ago now I received an email. It was after Epiphany Sunday, and the email was from a gentleman in a church that I'd served, and I wanted to make it clear it wasn't from a woman. It was from a, a gentleman, uh, loosely using that phrase. Uh, the uh, email said this. Do you know what would have happened if it had been three wise women instead of three wise men? They would have asked directions, arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and brought practical gifts. Can I get an amen from the women in the house? I got a card. I, this was from a woman in the church. It's a card related to Epiphany, and it's a picture. It's a cartoon characterization of the nativity, the Holy Family, and Mary is speaking on this cover of this card. Mary says this, diapers, receiving blankets, and an infant mule seat. Now those I can use. And the caption is, Fortunately, three wise women came by later. Merry Christmas. I want us to consider on this first Sunday of the new year, why do we call them wise? Why do we call them wise? When you think about it, their actions in many respects are not wise at all. They don't seem to pick up on the fact that Herod, King Herod, who was known as King of the Jews, just a little footnote, if you are already called King of the Jews, you are not interested in finding the King of the Jews. And Herod, they were not even suspicious of Herod, of wanting to find the baby Jesus. Herod, who was jealous and paranoid. Herod, who had killed his wife and three of his sons out of jealousy, out of suspicion, out of fear for the power that they might exert when he was gone. They're not really wise. Why do we call them wise? The gifts, even the gifts that are mentioned in the card and the email in jest. But really, I mean, these gifts are not really for a baby. At, fir at first look, it's not a bad question. Why do we call them wise? I want to suggest to you that we call them wise. They are wise because they do. They do what the real wise men fail to do. These astrologers, these magi, these magicians from foreign places, not even looking for a Messiah, they do what the chief priest and the scribes, that's who Herod calls to him. He calls to him the religious leaders in Jerusalem and he asks them, where is this, if this child is to be born, where is it to be born? And, and they know the right answer. These chief priests and scribes are knowledgeable. But friends, there is a difference between being knowledgeable about God and having wisdom related to God. They knew the answer to Herod's Bible quiz question, where is he to be born? And they, they could quote chapter and verse. They knew the book of Isaiah. They quoted immediately in Bethlehem. They knew exactly. They were the most knowledgeable about this coming Messiah. They knew more and acted least. Soren Kierkegaard, Soren Kierkegaard observed about these wise men, these astrologers, these magi. Kierkegaard said, although they could, ex or he refers to the scribes and the religious leaders, his reference to them, although they could explain where the Messiah should be born, they remain quite unperturbed in Jerusalem. And Kierkegaard goes on to say this. He says, we may know, we may know, the whole of Christianity, yet make no movement. The power, he said, 
the power that moved heaven and earth leaves us completely unmoved. The three kings, Kierkegaard said, had only a rumor, only a rumor to go by. And it moved them on that long journey. And I don't know about you, but that, that scares me to death. To think, to think that nobody, nobody who should have been at Jesus' birth was at Jesus' birth. The people who should have been leading the parade to Bethlehem, the scribes, the religious leaders, people like me, professional Christian people. I mean, it just... It scares me to think, would I have searched? Would I have gone? Or would I have been so settled, so comfortable back in Jerusalem? There's not a single person at Jesus' birth that should have been at Jesus' birth. Not a bishop. Not a preacher. Not a Sunday school teacher, not a member of the administrative board or a trustee, one in sight, not a single one. The ones who knew the most acted the least, never made an effort, never were moved enough to seek. Why do we call them why? This is my own thought, my own theory. They are wise because they are seekers. And I don't know about you, friends, but I don't ever want to think that I have learned enough about God, understood enough about the Bible, understood all that there is. I don't ever want to come to a point in my life where I don't continue to seek, to want to knock. To want to see if there might be another door, another possibility that might open. They're seekers. And that makes them wise. Some years ago, I was, I was wrestling with, you know, what is the will of God? What is God's will? Lord, what is your will? And this, this I'm not going to write a book about this because it's not worthy of writing a book and this doesn't make me a, a master theological mind, but the word that came to me was this. And it was a gift and it was a help to me at the time. And it was this. Seeking God's will is God's will. Seeking God's will is God's will. You see, if we ever quit seeking, if we ever become just so settled in what we already know and understand, you see the scribes, the religious leaders, they knew everything they wanted to know about God, thank you very much. They knew absolutely everything. They knew who God was, they knew who God, what God did in the world, they knew who God loved, they knew who God hated. And so this new thing, this star that appears, they're not looking for anything new. They're quite happy. Thank you very much. And it scares me. I've been in the church all my life. Inside my mama, the first Sunday, I was in church. And it scares me to death that I would ever stop seeking. You know the people who don't seek God anymore? They're people who already have God figured out. And when you turn on the news later today or tomorrow, it'll be some of those people who will do some horrible, horrible things in the world because they have no sense that there's something more that they do not understand about God. That God could possibly be up to something new and be moved to do that. 
when you come for communion in just a few minutes, I want to invite you to do this. This is a new year. I mean, isn't it, isn't it great? I mean, a new beginning that we might seek personally and as a church that we might seek something new that God might want to do in our lives, in our church's life. I mean, how good is that? Ben, next Sunday when we gather after worship, right? That's what we want to know. We will, Give us feedback. Help us to understand where is it that the wind of God's Spirit might be blowing in a way that none of us can comprehend right now. I mean, how exciting is that? May God, as you come forward today for communion, think about how is it that personally you might continue to be a seeker Someone who seeks the things of God in the world. To seek God's will in the world. Not to have it nailed down and locked down tight. How might you be open to that? That God might move you and move us as a church. Julie, can are you on the bench? She's fixing to be. I mean, that's... May God help you and may God help me and may God help us in a new year of possibilities to move us as those wise. They are wise because they moved. They sought. They looked for what God was doing. And that's the goal for all of us. Would you join? We're going to sing it this time actually uh, three times. In honor of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Well, you just sing it three times together. Julie, thank you. pray. Holy and gracious God, as we move toward your holy table in this beginning of a new and wondrous year before us, we pray for the grace as you gave those first wise men, the grace and the courage to move, to move towards you, to move toward your will, to move toward those things in the world that break your heart where we can make a difference. Oh God, strengthen us as you strengthen them. Help us as individuals and as a church to be moved, moved into serving you and to making you known in this world. To the glory of Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. He is our brother and he is our friend. And all God's wise men and women did say, Amen. Dear friends, we continue on page 15 for our order of Holy Communion. If you would turn in your red United Methodist hymnal, page 15. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, O oh God, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, my sisters and brothers, in remembrance of these, God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves now in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ often for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us, O God, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for a hurting world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, those seeking the Lord in our own lives, let us pray the prayer he has always taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I want to invite those that are assisting and serving to come forward and be prepared. As they're coming forward, I will just remind you what most of you are aware of. We do not practice closed communion. We practice what's known as open communion. That means anyone is welcome to come and receive communion. You're invited. You do not have to be a member of this church. You do not have to be a United Methodist. All are welcome. This is Christ's table, and we invite you to come. Should you need or desire a gluten-free option for bread, if you would just simply cross your arms over your chest as a sign, and that will alert us to the fact that you would like to receive gluten-free as a, a bread. Thank you. 
mission is to seek God in this day, to seek Him in this new year.
my hope and prayer for you and myself is that in this new year, we would be moved by God's will in our own life to seek God and God's ways in the world. If you'll take 471, I want to uh, let you know how we're going to proceed with this particular chorus. Uh, Julie's going to play it through just one time. You just, if you just want to calm your heart, perhaps even lay your hands out in a receptive way, whatever you feel led to do, just simply sit and reflect on how God might move you in the new year, how you might seek God in your own way. Uh, if you would do that as she plays through once, and then Lee is going to sing it through one other time, and then we'll stand and we'll sing it three times and honor the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to close. John Wesley had a wonderful covenant prayer, and part of that prayer is in our hymnal. I'm going to share this prayer with you. You don't need to turn to it, but it's a covenant prayer. It's particularly for the first Sunday of a new year, and Wesley had a whole covenant service. We're not doing the whole covenant service, but this is his covenant prayer, particularly appropriate uh, for wise men and women as ourselves seeking God. Let this be our benediction. Wesley prayed, I am no longer my own but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low by thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. And all God's wise men and wise women did say,